Uh, today we're going to be making a chicken marengo. Uh, this is one of my favorite springtime dishes to make. Uh, it has a lot of vegetables. It's nice and light and airy. Perfect for those, you know, nice, you know, warmer days where you don't really want anything too heavy. Um, now for this one, uh, you see we obviously have some uh, sweet peppers, some onions, uh, multiple types of mushrooms, uh, you know, tomato paste, uh, beef broth, some white wine, uh, and then obviously you have the chicken as well. For this one, uh, this is about a less, little less than a pound of chicken. Now I usually like to make, when I'm making these meals for just myself, I usually do about a pound of chicken because then it makes enough for about five meals. Uh, and this stuff freezes really well too, so you can actually make it, put it in the freezer, and then, you know, one of those long, rough days at work, you can, uh, you know, take it out, pop it in the microwave, and you have dinner. Really nice and easy. Uh, this also has some flour. I have to get that out still. And, uh, yeah, well, let's just dive right in. So one thing you want to do before you get started with this, uh, with the cooking, is you want to prepare all of the vegetables and all the other ingredients. So... Uh, for this one, I'm going to be chopping up the peppers, uh, the onions, and then, of course, the mushrooms. I also like to measure out all the other ingredients, such as the, uh, the broth, um, the tomato paste, and then the wine. Uh, I find it just speeds along the cooking process, and then you're not trying to, you know, find all your measuring utensils <laughs> in the middle of the of cooking, which can be a little bit stressful sometimes. Uh, one thing I do also want to mention is, so the original recipe for this actually calls for using bell peppers. Uh, I actually prefer to use these little baby uh, sweet peppers. Um, I tend to like the taste a little bit better. Um, and also just, you know, I think the original recipe called for two bell peppers. So you can only really get two colors with that. But with the uh, baby peppers, you get multiple colors. So it makes the dish just a little bit more bright, a little more fun. So just a suggestion. All right, so one of the first things you want to do is you want to get the chicken out. You want to pat it dry. I have not patted this dry yet. Um, and then you want to actually chop it into about bite-sized cubes. Uh, this will help it, one, cook faster, and then also it will cook more evenly. Because uh, sometimes it can be hard cooking with chicken. Because uh, you see you have some portions of the breast that are really thin, whereas others are very thick. Uh, so kind of chopping it into equal size pieces uh, really helps with the uniformity of the cooking. All right, so once you get the chicken all chopped up into little bite-sized pieces, uh, the next step is going to be uh, dredging the chicken in the flour. Uh, now, the recipe calls for half a cup of flour. Uh, what I actually prefer to do is kind of sprinkle a little bit on, uh, see if it coats the chicken, you know, and if it looks, you know, like it needs some more, add a little bit extra. Uh, so I might not, may not actually hit that full half of a cup. All right, so we got the chicken all covered in flour. Uh, so for this chicken, I actually only used a little more than a quarter cup. Uh, so like I said earlier, you don't really need to use a full half a cup unless you have a lot more chicken. Uh, but for this, uh, just a hair more than a quarter cup was enough to actually sufficiently uh, coat these. You really just want need a nice light coating. It doesn't need to be, need to be too thick. Uh, and then one thing I also forgot to mention earlier is uh, this is also the point where you will be sprinkling the chicken with the salt and the pepper. Now with the peppers... Uh, you're going to want to chop off the stem end, um, and then you're going to want to thinly slice them. All right, so we got the peppers nice and chopped up. Isn't that pretty? Love all the colors, nice and bright. Um, one thing I do recommend if you don't have them, um, get some prep bowls. Uh, these things are just so helpful. I have a set, I think it's 10 of them, and they're all different sizes. They're, they're nesting, so it's easy to store, and they don't take up too much space. But it's so nice to cook with them. Uh, you can, you know, obviously as you chop, you can dump your ingredients in them and get some out of the way. Uh, I used to be that person that would leave everything on the cutting board and try to find space to chop everything else. And then I'd also be that person who is taking handfuls of ingredients and running across the kitchen to dump it into the pot. Don't be like me. Be, be smarter. Actually use, um, you know, prep bowls. It just, it'll make your life so much easier. Uh, now moving on to the onions. So... You might notice that the recipe actually only calls for two onions. Uh, however, these onions are actually really teeny. See, they're very small onions. Uh, so I would say 90, 95% of the produce that I get actually comes from Imperfect Foods. So a lot of the stuff comes either misshapen or too small. Uh, so this is one of the cases where the onions are just teeny, teeny onions. So I am just estimating that five of these small onions are about equivalent to two normal size onions. Um, as I start chopping, I'll kind of reassess the situation, and I might add another one. I have a whole bag, so that's not a problem. All right, now with the onion, um, you're going to want to chop it in half, and then 
uh, thinly sliced so you have these nice little thin strips of, uh, of the onion. Uh, I'm being lazy, I am just dumping the onion into the same bowl as the peppers because they both get added to the, uh, the pot at the exact same time and, well, I'm too lazy to get out a second pot. All right, now for the mushrooms, um, these are actually already pretty small. Uh, so all I'm gonna do with these is I'm just gonna, you know, kind of maybe chop them in half, just really roughly chop them, uh, kind of make them more like bite-sized pieces. Uh, so this shouldn't take too long to get the mushrooms chopped up. I have two types, I have shiitake and then I also have uh, some baby bellas. Um, so I'll get those chopped up and then we are gonna start cooking soon. Some nice baby bellas here, we're gonna chop these up next. Again, just gonna chop them into little bite-sized pieces, like some of the small ones like this, you know, I'll probably just chop the stem off. Um, but yeah, you really just, you know, you don't need to do much. Remember, mushrooms will shrink considerably when they're cooked, uh, so you don't need to go too overboard with getting them all that small. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. Uh, usually I start with this, but I was uh, a little distracted with the uh, chopping that I totally forgot. Um, but now we're gonna measure out the liquids. So we have the wine, and then we also have the beef broth. Now with the broths, I typically like to do the, the less sodium one or the reduced sodium ones. Um, I feel like it's better for me just to add the salt to the recipe for taste uh, rather than get it from all the ingredients. Now for this, it calls for a half a cup of uh, white wine. I think I mentioned this before. I like the uh, Sauvignon Blanc for this. Uh, I find that gives it a really nice taste. Uh, and while I'm measuring out the wine, I will also be measuring out some wine for myself. Also shout out to the Cape Cod Winery. I'm not sure if you can see that on the glass, but uh, if you find yourself on the Cape, I highly recommend checking them out. They are really good, uh, good wine. You can go there, hang out for a little bit, and uh, they are also dog friendly, so that is a plus. All right, so the recipe also calls for some diced tomatoes and then some uh, tomato paste. Now, I don't know if you have gotten the tomato paste in these like little like toothpaste tubes, <laughs> but these are so great. I'm so sick of buying those little cans where you only use like, you know, a tablespoon of it and then you have the whole entire can left. Uh, I know some people freeze it, but just for me, it just, <laughs> if it went in the freezer, it got lost. Uh, so I love these little just tubes. It's really helpful. Uh, so this one also calls for two tablespoons of tomato paste. That squeezed out my little baby prep, little baby prep bowl. It's really cute. <laughs> um, and I think butter, we need butter still. Butter and some olive oil for the cooking. So we are, we're almost done with getting the ingredients prepped. Yay. All right, now the fun stuff starts. We are gonna get into the cooking. Uh, so I just use a little drizzle of olive oil. Um, I can't remember the last time I actually measured the, num the amount of olive oil I've put in. Um, I just do a little drizzle uh, and then you let it get nice and warm. Uh, so it coats the bottom of the pan. Uh, one thing I think is probably the hardest thing about cooking is being patient enough to let the pan get nice and hot. Like you want it hot enough that if you drop a drop of water in there, it starts sizzling immediately. Uh, listen to that sizzle, beautiful. Um, now with this, you want to let the chicken cook uh, for about three minutes per side. And please, 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 I beg of you, do not touch the chicken until it's time to flip. Uh, you want it to get that nice golden brown. You don't want to be stirring it. You want to get it so it's just cooked perfectly and then flip it over, do it again on the other side, and then we're going to remove it to a plate, uh, cover it with some uh, foil to keep it warm um, before we get onto the, uh, the rest of the ingredients. All right, trying to get that nice golden brown. It should be done in about a minute. And uh, then we're going to remove it to a plate. Now, remember, at this stage, it does not need to be fully cooked through. We're just trying to get a nice golden brown on it. Um, you know, it's going to actually help keep all the juices in uh, when it's cooking a little bit later. All right, now I just added in the peppers, the onions, uh, and then the mushrooms. Um, I also added a little extra olive oil because it was starting to look really dry. Uh, so now you just want to mix these. You want to saute it for about five minutes. You know, you don't want it to get mushy, but you want it to get a little cooked. Okay, so we are still letting the vegetables cook, but I just, I just got to point out, look how beautiful this is. Look at all the colors. This is why I love this for spring. It looks so fresh and so good. Uh, gosh, it smells so good. I wish, it, I wish you could smell it through the video. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> All right, I just added the tomato paste. I am going to mix it in with the vegetables and uh, stir it thoroughly for about two minutes. All right, tomato paste is nice to mix in. And the next step is going to be adding the wine. Uh, now the wine is actually gonna deglaze the pan. So we are going to really scrape the bottom of the pan to get all that fond off. All right, so the wine has been added to the pan. And now we are going to scrape the bottom and stir it all in. You really wanna get as much of the uh, brown bits on the bottom of the pan 
off and into the food. It's gonna add a little extra flavor. Uh, now we're gonna cook this for about two or three minutes. We want the uh, the wine to reduce a little bit, get a little of that liquid up, um, but I, I, I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so phenomenal. All right, so we just added the beef broth in the can of diced tomatoes, and we're gonna start to mix this together. Uh, it's already boiling, uh, but the recipe does say that if it isn't boiling yet, to wait till it boils before you add the chicken in. Uh, so we are going to add the chicken in in one minute once I get this nice and combined. All right, just added the chicken back in. Um, I also like to dump whatever accumulated juices uh, on the plate. I like to get that in the pan as well. You know, we're trying to get as much flavor in this as humanly possible. Uh, so now we're going to cook this for about four minutes until the chicken is cooked through. Shouldn't take too long because they are bite-sized pieces. Uh, you know, if you're unsure, you can always take one of and just you know cut it in half and see if it's still pink on the inside. Obviously, if it's pink, it's not cooked. One more step: adding some butter. Butter always makes things better, right? Okay, so once uh, the chicken is cooked through, you want to actually turn off the heat and then you want to add in the butter. Uh, the recipe calls for, I believe, a half a tablespoon of butter, and you just want to stir that in, get it nice and mixed in with the rest of the mixture. And then I usually like to let it sit and cool for about like five, 10 minutes uh, before serving. Uh, now I usually just serve it plain. I don't serve it with any carbs or anything, but you can always serve it over like some quinoa, maybe some rice, uh, really make it up to you, whatever, whatever you feel like. Or maybe with a nice side of like rustic bread, it actually sounds pretty good. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, whew, this smells absolutely amazing. <laughs> I wish they would invent a way to smell through the computer because <laughs> this is just, this is phenomenal. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you try to make this one. It's, it's really not that hard. Uh, I know it seems like a lot of steps, but I mean, it's a one pot meal. It makes a ton of food. So, you know, you have food for days um, or a large family. And uh, yeah, it's it's really not that hard. Uh, I mean, the chopping, I think, is the hardest thing. It's just, you know, all the slicing and dicing, but that's not really all that bad. All right. Well, enjoy, everybody. I hope you like this.